In this video, we are going to cover functional testing. If you've never written a functional test before, I think you definitely want to watch this video because it's definitely one of the most important parts of testing because it covers everything from the user's point of view, which ultimately is what needs to work. Before we can get started, we are going to download the Chrome driver, which is what I'm going to be using in this episode. Feel free to use any other driver you want, like the Gecko driver, which is Firefox. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to click on Chrome driver 2.45. And then this is going to lead us to this page and we can just head over to the Windows one. That's going to download for us. Okay. Back in our project, let's create a new folder called functional underscore tests. In here, we'll create a new file called underscore underscore init underscore underscore py. So all of our tests that we write in here are going to be recognized by the test driver. We're going to be writing the functional test for the project list page, which is going to be enough for just exploring how to write functional tests in general. And then you can apply the concepts to all of your other pages basically. So let's call this test underscore project list page dot py. Now I've also included the chrome driver.exe, which I just downloaded inside of the functional test folder. So make sure to do that as well. And if you haven't already, make sure to pip install selenium. So let's create a class called test project list page. Now, this time we are not going to inherit from test case. And for this, there's a class called static live server test case. There's one version called live server test case only, which doesn't serve the static files. And then there's this one called static live server test case, which also displays the static files for us. So basically in this way, the app is going to look just like it looks in our browser for us when we just access it normally. Let's import the web driver from Selenium import web driver. We also want our model from budget.models. We're going to take the project model. Now we can import the static live server test case class, which I always forget where it is, but it's inside of django.contrib.staticfiles.testing. And down the road, we're also going to use the reverse function. So we might as well import that. Okay. Let's just assert that this is actually being recognized by the test driver. So let's create a function called test foo. And we're going to self.assert equals zero one. And actually we did misplace this folder right here. It should of course be where the managed of pi is, so we can even recognize it in the test runner. Okay, now let's open up the command line and then type in managed pi test functional underscore tests. And of course, this is going to give us an error, which we expected. So now we can actually get started writing our test. In the setup method, we want to create a new browser instance, which we can use in all of our other tests. Let's set self.browser equal to webdriver.chrome. And then this wants to path to our web driver from our root directory. So this is functional tests and chrome driver.exe. And while we are at it in the teardown method, we might as well just close the browser after every single function. So self.browser.close. So again, if you don't know, this is going to run before every single test function and it's going to run after every single test function. So we don't need to duplicate that code. And the first function we want to write is called test no projects alert is displayed. And for this to make sense, let's make sure that we see something on the screen as soon as we execute our test. So self.browser.get, which now we can actually type in a URL for our test to navigate. And the static live server test case has a, an attribute called self.live server URL which as the name says, it's the URL of a live server, so we can navigate to it. Now, I also want to import time just so we have 
some seconds to look at it before it disappears. So time dot sleep, let's say 20. Now execute it again. And you can see the browser already popping up and navigating. So this is the no project alert that I want to make sure that is displayed because at the beginning we have no projects. And if we click on inspect, you can see that there's a class called no project dash wrapper. So we want to make sure that the object with the class of no project wrapper actually exists, which speaks for the fact that this is actually displayed, which should be the case in the very beginning when there's nothing created yet. So I usually like to write some comments in here just to mimic the user interaction. The user requests the page for the first time. So we want to set the alert equal to self.browser. Now the first method we can call on this is called find element by class name. And the class name, as we just saw, is no project dash wrapper. Now called self dot assert equals. We want to make sure that the alert dot find element by tag name, which is yet another function you can call. And the tag name is h3. So inside of the alert, we want to make sure to get the h3 tag, which is located in there. And we want to make sure that the text of it is, sorry, you don't, don't have any projects yet, which is what it should say. So let's just put three more hyphens just to see that this test is actually failing now. Okay, we're going to run it. And yeah, you can see that the actual text is sorry, don't have any projects. And because we put the hyphens, we now get an error. So we know that everything is now working fine. So basically what we just did is fire up a browser, then locate to our server, which is made possible thanks to the static live server test case class, which we subclass from. And then we can just look for elements normally and call a couple of attributes to them and make sure that they are what we expect them to be. Okay. Another thing we want to test for is that the button which appears as soon as we get the alert that there are no projects actually redirects us to the correct view for adding one. So test no projects alert button redirects to add page. So yet again we can call self.browser.get, we might as well just copy it from here. In this case, it's going to be the same setup code. And yet again, with this test, the user requests the page for the first time. So we can copy that too. You know, just giving us a couple of hints at what is happening from a user's point of view. Let's again use time.sleep to give us some time to look at what is happening inside of the actual window. So you can see this big button right here. And if we right click and click on inspect, it redirects us to add. So if we click it, then we are redirected to this form, which allows us to add a new project. So we want to make sure that this mechanism is also working. In this case, we only have one a tag on the screen, so we can get it via the tag name too. self.browser.find elements by tag name a, and then we can click it directly. There's no need to store it in a variable in this case because we're just going to use it inline. And then we want to make sure that the user is actually redirected to the form. So self.assert equals. And the browser has a property called current underscore URL. And this should be equal to the add underscore URL, which we haven't specified yet. But we can do so up top. And then we are going to set this equal to self.live server URL, which again is the root of our, yeah, just localhost colon and then some port, basically just where our site is located. And then we can set this to self.live server URL plus the reverse of add.
Awesome, our tests are passing. So everything is working as expected. Now we handled what we wanted in the case that there's no project yet. But now we also want to handle the case that there is already at least one project. So test user sees project underscore list. And in this case, we want to create a project first before we request a browser page. So let's set project one equal to project.objects.create. Set the name to project one and the budget to 10K. And then we can take the same line from above. But now we have a project already as soon as we request the page. And this time let's write the user sees the project on the screen. And in this case, we can get the project name via the h5 tag, which is the only one in this case on the screen. So let's do that as well. Of course, how you're going to access these elements is going to entirely depend on your HTML markup. So self.assert equals self.browser.find element by tag name h5.text should be equal to project one. Again, this one here, which we specified. And you can already see that these tests by far take the longest to run. Our test ran successfully, awesome. The last thing I want to test is that if we click the visit button on an actual element, let's just demonstrate this via run server. So you can see that we have a visit button and if we inspect it, it's just a normal A tag. And if we click this, we get redirected to the list view, or sorry, the detail view. And we also want to make sure that this mechanism is working. So test user is redirected to project detail. Let's copy this code from above. That's going to be the same. And then write a small comment, the user sees the project on the screen, he clicks the visit link and is redirected to the detail page. Okay, like we've done above already, let's set the detail underscore URL equal to self.live server URL plus the reverse of in this case detail and if we head back to our URLs you can see that we need a slug for this to actually be able to reverse so we'll pass an arcs and in here we'll pass in project one dot name or dot slug might as well in this case they're the same thing but anyway and in this case we can use the fact that the link has the text of visit in uppercase letters to navigate it with selenium so self dot browser dot find elements by link text visit dot click. I don't think this would work if we had more than one element which has the link of link text of visit. This works just fine because we only have one. Otherwise, you would probably use get elements and then an index. But anyway, uh, we only have one, so <laughs> let's not worry about that. Then we can call self.assert equals and we want to make sure that the current URL is equal to the, as my guess, detail URL. Okay, now let's run this bad boy and see what happens. And we don't get any complaints, which I'm going to take as a good sign. But yeah, I hope that this gives you a good introduction to functional testing and you can now start applying it to your own projects. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below, leave a like, and if you haven't already, check out the Django tips guide, which again, you can find in the description down below. I'll see you inside of the next episode. Take care and cheers.